The Nissan GTR. It's an incredible car, and as you'll see later in this video, its aerodynamics are futuristic. They're far better than they get credit for. And actually, this video was supposed to be mainly about how speed holes affected the GTR's performance. But once I saw the GTR simulations, I realized that its aerodynamics were too good not to focus on. So we will still see the effects of the speed holes, but we'll focus more on the GTR because it's incredible. So this is the regular 2008 GTR. And then this is with speed holes located very uniformly over the hood, maybe a little too uniformly. They shouldn't be confused with the knackered ducts in the front because while it might be tempting to call them speed holes, they're not. Now for the regular GTR traveling at 72 kph, the flow is exceptional in some locations. For example, the hood is nice, the hood without the holes I mean, because look how well behaved the flow is over it, and there is no separation over the front lip despite the front being so chonky. That is because of how much flow is being sucked in through the radiator, and because the engineers cleverly curved the front down a little bit. Another impressive part is the start of the roof, because you can see an edge there, but the air still moves over it nicely. Again, the engineers did that by starting the edge ahead of a curved section instead of a flat section. That allows the air to stay attached. The roof then has a weird low pressure zone. It's weird because it's almost completely isolated to the roof, and it doesn't spill down the rear window that much, at least not compared to most cars. That greatly reduces the drag because you have high pressure here. In this particular plane, the speed holes don't seem to do too much. The flow is pretty much identical. That could be because this plane is right on the center plane and that there are no speed holes on this line, but even still, the pressure is also the same over the hood and the roof. So I'm starting to think that speed holes are pointless. One bad part about the GTR is the rear wing's height. It's just too low. Look how slow the flow is hitting it. While the free stream flow is 20 meters per second, the flow hitting it is maybe 12, so you're not providing the wing with much energy to actually do anything. And that's a really important point because you might design the wing to produce a certain amount of downforce, but if the velocity of the flow hitting it is low, then it will produce less, and you'll probably have a larger wake and more drag because the flow struggles to stay attached. But that is for a regular car. As we'll see later, this wing somehow still performs far better than it should. Anyway, we get slow flow here because you can see in the pressure plot there's high pressure over the boot. That pushes back on the incoming flow a lot, so it decelerates. Much of the reason why we get this high pressure zone is because this boot hasn't been raised up enough. They've raised it up a little bit, but it could be higher. Alternatively, you could mount the wing higher so it gets into fresh flow. This problem also occurs with the speed holes, so the speed holes kind of suck. Now from on top, I just want to show one important feature of the GTR, which might have been 15 years ahead of its time. So if you look at the back, you see just how sharp the edge is. The flow sticks to the sides very nicely, which is partly because the panels taper around the rear wheels. Then it hits the edge and separates cleanly. That might not seem like much, but what it does is reduce the unsteadiness of the separated flow. So you know that right here, the flow will detach. That keeps the forces on the car far more stable. So it's easier to drive and drive fast. That's the exact same design philosophy that has taken the automotive industry by storm over the last few years. So many cars feature sharp rear edges, particularly hatchbacks and four wheel drives around the rear window. They have these very sharp edges and they're added for exactly the same reason. I don't know if Nissan knew about that idea when they were designing the GTR or if they were keeping it in the same style as previous GTRs, but I suspect they might've known. In this current format, it does make the weight very large, but you could reduce that problem by reducing the rear size and still keeping the edge sharp. That will reduce the wake size too. In terms of the pressure, I'm actually really impressed with it because the pressure in the wake isn't that low, particularly compared to the upstream pressure around the hood and wheels. The only thing stopping the GTR producing thrust is the rear face is more vertical, so the force on it is more in the drag direction, whereas the hood is more sloped, so more of the force is in the lift direction. But still, the relatively high pressure in the rear is reducing the drag of the GTR hugely. And around the sides, the GTR is impressive, the flow stays attached really well and much better than a lot of cars. One common problem is the rear wheels produce huge wakes. That then spoils the downstream regions, but here, the wakes are still pretty small. So these simulations were done with open foam. And if you're interested in learning open foam, then check out our courses here. Now, I was going to compare this view to with the speed holes, but what's the point? They're pretty much the same, so let's move on to the drag. Now, impressively, the wheels are pretty much the only major drag producers. The wake, because of how high the pressure is there, doesn't feature much drag. That's very hard to do. And something super surprising is the rear wing. So remember that it was seeing pretty dirty flow, but here it doesn't produce substantial drag. 
Even the rear window produces higher levels than the wing, and there's almost nothing there. I don't know what this rear wing profile is, but it's very, very good. And another really nice detail, which shows just how hard the engineers tried to reduce the car's drag, just look at the rear wing how it's attached to the car. It's done through the ends. By doing that, it's reduced the induced drag of the wing. Kind of like how winglets on an airplane work, but even better here. So overall, they might have only saved 1% of the car's drag, but that's why this car comes in with a drag coefficient of just 0.31, which is phenomenal for a high performance car. Adding speed holes really doesn't do anything. For the lift, the GTR produces 9.4 kilos of downforce, while with the speed holes, it produces 9.4 kilos of downforce. Peace out, amigos.